Standby lights, camera action. The secret of Nim. Costuming, Mrs. Grisby, we tried several ideas. When we first got the idea of using this mouse, we needed a nice country bumpkin look. And so we tried different things. And one of the artists came up with something that looks like this. We thought that looks just a little too, um, too happy, you know, too affluent. So we tried something a little different, more country. And this looked a little too overdone. I mean, she couldn't move around in this kind of costume, and Miss Brissy herself objected to this. So she said, why couldn't we get something that looks a little freer? So we tried letting her ears down to the side of her head and putting the hair down like this, and we put a little red cape on her. She didn't like that at all. And it doesn't look very feminine. So somebody suggested that if we took the ears and pushed them up on top of her head, like all her hair had been piled on top of her head, and pushed this hair up, we would probably get a very cute looking little mouse. So we did that. But something was still not quite right, and I think it had to do with this cape, because the cape feels a little too well to do. And since Mrs. Brisby isn't a rich mouse, we thought if we would just fringe the edges and maybe put a little patch on her, she would look... Um, like she's a humble little mouse that doesn't have much to live on. And this feeling will stop. Now, uh, oh, oh, yes, well, why did you send It's Jeff. He's at it again. Uh, the air blows and they'll win. It's before the council now. This time he's attacking Nicodemus openly. And the plan, no doubt. Nothing will come. It'll pass. Beware, boy, he's dangerous. Be the undoing of the ransom. Sorry to come here at such a bad time. I suppose. So. No, sweet lady, you are welcome here. Um, we tend to take ourselves a little too seriously. Hmm. One of the first characters I worked on in this picture was um. The Great Owl. Why have you come? Please. Uh, forgive me for disturbing you, but my son's life is in great danger. The Carl has come early this year. Oh, your family. The voice of uh, the owl. It was John Carradine. He was very inspirational to, uh, you know, for the uh, development of the character. His voice had suggested how the character should look and how it should act. So we took our cue from that. Nicodemus. He's an interesting character because um, he is a very mystical figure in the rat colony. The meeting point between science and uh, the paranormal, the psychical, the occult. And uh, he dabbles in uh, metaphysics, and uh, you get the impression that he has probably advanced further than any of the rats that escaped from the National Institute of Mental Health. Another character uh, who's probably uh, one of the basic comedy reliefs of the, of the picture, quite a funny guy named uh, Jeremy, and... Uh, over the course of the production, it's hard for me to separate him from the voice because the voice of the character is Dom DeLuise, who did a, a fabulous job in making this character come to life as far as the voice. And, of course, the voice inspired the, the way the character is drawn. This is the scene where Jeremy, the crow, is mm -hmm. all tied up with rope. Is that it? Yeah, it's he's all tied up with rope, and uh, he's on a log, and the little Mrs. Grisby comes along and tries to untie him. While she's doing it, the farmer's cat sneaks up on him. And he's allergic to cats. So uh -huh. he starts going, I, 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 I. Do you want some, do you want some lines on this? Why don't we get some lines? 
Then I will also indicate the length of this scene. The scene is going to be 22 feet long, which lasts maybe for about five, six seconds on the screen. So I'll right up here in the right hand corner, I'll put 22 feet in length. So that when I hand this thing to an animator, he'll know how long it seems to be. And I'll tell him at that time, we'll discuss the acting of the scene when I hand it to the animator. And I think I know just the person that can do the scene very well. Jonathan? Percy? May? Huh? You know, she's trying to read the book, but she doesn't read very well. Okay, so I've done you a layout here, which I think may help. <laughs> and what it is, is Mrs. Grisby crawls up by this book that's on a table, and she's almost as big as the book itself, and she tries to read these great big letters. Does it have to be on 16 field paper? It's really hard. Yeah, yeah, it does. The reason I tried to put it on the small size paper, but we couldn't, because we want the camera to follow her when she goes up. get a nice camera move if you just yeah. can find out. You'll be glad, and I know you can do it. So, anyway, just suffer. Yeah. And as she reads the words, make sure that her head is actually turning and looking at the words. Okay. Now her thoughts. She actually sounds like she's just happy in the fact that she can read, and then it starts to sink into her. So what's, she, what's she learning about? Her husband. That's right. what she wants to know. Okay. So, you know, put those thoughts in her brain. I don't want to see her just move up there and then just start to read. You know, that's just movement. It seems like I should keep her kind of quiet. I'm thinking that way. I don't know if that's right, but if I get her too active, then I'm not. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. So move the brain, not the body. The heart. The heart. All right. Here you go. Oh, you <laughs> Good luck. You can do that very well. Jonathan, Frankie, made possible the last escape. From the terrible cruelty of men. John? He was killed. Uh, killed today while drugging the farmer's cat. Dragging. Oh, oh I, I never knew just what happened. I think that the art of animation is a very valuable heritage that's been given to the whole world and that it actually enriches the lives of all the people all over the world as it did mine when I was a child. And to see that lost, to see that even diminished, is a great loss. And um, I think it's, it's worth defending, it's worth fighting for, it's worth keeping alive until there's someone else besides myself or all the other people that love animation so dearly can take a hold of it and make it grow more. And I, for one, am very, very thankful that there was a guy named Walt Disney, you know, and that he did want it to work like this. It helped my life. And what I'm hoping is that the films that we can make here will help some other people too.